Hi, and welcome to another screencast from eDesign360. This is your host, Ames Brown, and today we're going to be picking up from where we left off before uh, about stopping and controlling audio uh, when moving around. And we'll get into a little bit more of a sophisticated approach that allows uh, fine grain audio control uh, in instructional modules. So, quick review from uh, what we covered previously. Uh, if we uh, look here in the library of our file, we have uh, a sound uh, file here. And uh, we can simply add that to frame one here uh, by uh, dragging it onto the stage. And then we see uh, a little tiny audio wave uh, that appears on the frame. And then to provide uh, some control so that the uh, audio will stop when somebody moves on to another section of the instructional module, uh, we come in and uh, we look at the action script here. Right now it just has on release next frame. And uh, so we want to stop the audio before it goes on to the next frame. So remember this is an action script 2 uh, file in uh, Flash CS5. And we click on stop all sounds, and get rid of that extra space here. And uh, now uh, we have uh, fine grain control. So uh, if we look at the, uh, notice a little A here, I'm going to click off. Right, so you can see there's a tiny A there on the frame. That means there is action script actually on the frame, not just on the button. So we look on the frame, and it's just simply a stop. Again, from uh, under timeline control, that's where you get the stop. And what that uh, causes to happen is that when the module opens, it's going to stop here. And because we've uh, put a... Uh, uh, audio file uh, on this frame from our library, uh, it's going to immediately start playing. And then if we click the button, it's going to stop before it goes on to the next frame. So let's just test that out with uh, Control Test Movie. I'll just hit the keyboard command for that. Okay, and here is a quick recording just to have something to go into our flash file. Okay, so it's waiting for us to go on, but let's test that it actually stops the audio. So I will, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, just play again. Uh, rewind. Okay, and here is a quick and recording. And then I click, and it stops the audio and takes us to the next frame. Now, here we have some uh, rather sophisticated uh, ways of approaching audio. And we'll look at what it does here, and then we'll look at how we do that in Flash. This type of control allows you to uh, have many different uh, pieces of audio that might be associated with uh, content that the learner can explore right within a single screen of an instructional module. So we need much more fine-grained control than just having audio on the frame that's going to automatically play. Uh, here we see, if I click on this button... Okay, and here is a quick recording just to have something to go in. And I click on this button, it, it stops it. Uh, now, uh, what happens if I click on this multiple times? You'll start to see a cacophony uh, emerge as the audio replays over each other. Okay, and so here starting, is a quick recording. I click okay, again, and here is a quick and I'll click again. Okay, and here is a and I'll click recording. again. Okay, and here is a quick file. recording. Whew. Ha, huh, quiet again. Uh, and we can uh, also uh, integrate uh, both of uh, uh, these types of uh, controls uh, right into uh, one button. So we'll uh, see what happens here. Okay, and here is a quick recording. Okay, and here is a quick recording. Okay, and here is a quick record. All right, so you see that uh, each time I click, 
uh, it's going to restart uh, the audio and not interleave or, or overleave and create cacophony as uh, the sounds play over each other. Uh, and then we still need a stop button. So I'm just using uh, very big buttons here uh, to uh, illustrate. And let's go and take a look at how that works. All right, so we go on to uh, the next frame here. Now, uh, there are two major things that we have to do in order to be able to uh, control audio in this fashion. Uh, the first is uh, we go to uh, the each audio file that we want to be able to use with fine grain control in our module. In other words, it's not just going to be narration dropped on a frame. Uh, that automatically plays when uh, the uh, the screen appears uh, to the learner. Uh, so uh, we uh, right click, control click here on a Mac uh, and select properties. And uh, we see a window like this that pops up for that particular library file. I'm going to go and click on the advanced button here and expand it. And I'm going to say export for action script. All right, so these might not be uh, selected. So export for action script, export in frame one, and then I'm going to uh, give it a name. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to name it exactly the same as the file name uh, in my library. So what does this actually mean in terms of uh, the uh, the audio file, well, uh, export for ActionScript uh, means that ActionScript can have control of the audio, and export in frame one means that the, the audio uh, will uh, be accessible for ActionScript starting in frame one uh, of the file. So very important that we have the identifier and that we have export for ActionScript. So I'm going to click OK here. And uh, so now you can see under this column that says linkage in your library, it now says audio demo. So uh, now we can do something with that audio demo. And to do something with it, we have to uh, define a variable. So we go on the frame, right, that uh, we're going to be uh, doing these uh, controls with. <coughs> and uh, Actually, you can actually define your variables uh, starting uh, all the way on frame one. Uh, and uh, we start by uh, putting in var. You can see it's in blue here because it's a reserved term in ActionScript. Uh, so var for variable. We're defining a variable. Uh, and the variable uh, is called audio demo. Now, you could um, uh, call it anything you want, but uh, just for consistency, we're going to name this variable the exact same name that we uh, use for the linkage and for the files. That's a convenient way to think about approaching this. And then we say equals new sound, uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. Uh, so uh, now this variable name, uh, we start the next line with. All right, so we're defining uh, the variable further, audio demo dot, you know, period, uh, attach sound. So we're going to attach a sound to this variable, the variable that we defined up here, right, and that we're now uh, further defining here. And then in parentheses, uh, and in quotes inside the parentheses, we use the linkage name. Uh, the, uh, remember, uh, over here, properties, and uh, we see that we have our identifier audio demo. That is uh, what we are putting here uh, in quotes. Uh, and then we uh, end with a semicolon. So now whenever we call uh, the variable audio demo, uh, it's going to uh, uh, play the, uh, the sound. It has access uh, to that sound. All right, so that's defined on uh, the frame. And you could define all of the audio variables you need. Uh, and you would just have a list of them standing down. Each one would have two lines like this uh, extending all the way down. And you could do that right in frame one of your files so that 
uh, they load right at, right at the same time that the uh, uh, instructional module file uh, loads. And uh, so now when we look uh, at the scripts on the buttons, uh, this one just has uh, on release, right, with the opening brace, closing brace. And here we have our uh, audio demo uh, variable name, and we put dot start. Right? And uh, for most cases, uh, you're going to be just putting parentheses zero comma zero. Uh, this refers to uh, the time point in the file that it would start, and this refers to how many times uh, it would loop. Uh, so uh, when you define it as just zero comma zero, uh, it's going to start at the beginning of the file and play once. Okay, uh, and uh, then uh, all we need to do on this button uh, is to, uh, on release, stop all sounds. So we've got grown used to using the stop all sounds, and uh, in this case, uh, all that's doing is just stopping anything uh, that's playing. Now, we saw the problem with uh, this button that if you start clicking on it multiple times, you'll get uh, the overlaying of audio forming a cacophony. Uh, so a uh, much better approach to replace uh, you know, that button with is uh, this approach you see on this button. So we still have the, uh, the variable name that we defined on the frame, uh, audio demo start, right? But just above it, we put stop all sounds. So that means that every time it's clicked, it's going to stop all sounds, and then it's going to play uh, the audio demo variable. So you could imagine having uh, multiple buttons uh, like this that uh, you could have uh, on your stage. Uh, you could have images that you click on that are these buttons that you've made the image into a button by defining it as a symbol. Uh, you can have uh, words that you click on, uh, or you can have uh, regular buttons. Uh, but you can now have multiple buttons uh, on uh, the stage, each one calling a different variable. And then you have one button which stops sound playing, right? So somebody can then go through right on the same screen of the instructional module uh, and explore different audio components that you have built into uh, your instruction. So remember, what makes this work is that on the frame itself, and you see that A there, uh, that uh, we've already defined uh, the variable, right? So the variables have to be defined in, on the frame. Each variable uh, takes two lines. And uh, I would suggest that uh, you keep the same uh, name for your variable that you use for uh, your uh, audio file in the library. So that means that you should name your audio files well so that they work well for your variable names. So for each file that you're going to be uh, executing fine-grained control in the module, uh, you have to look at the properties for that file in your library and uh, you need to give it an identifier and that identifier I'm suggesting should be the same name as uh, the file, and that it's exporting for ActionScript and exporting for frame one, meaning that it's uh, accessible right at the, the start of the module. Um, so uh, then I, when you uh, I come over and start uh, listing two lines, for every single sound that you want to have audio control for. And the two lines will start with naming the variable. And if you use the same name as you used for the audio file, it keeps it consistent with new sound. Right? The second line uses the variable name that was just defined in the first line with a dot attached sound. And then in quotes inside parentheses, the actual identifier uh, name that appears under the linkage uh, column in the library. So now you have uh, a uh, very nice approach to fine-grained audio control for your instructional modules. This has been eDesign 360. Join us again for another screencast in the near future where we get into even more advanced topics on Flash, 
an instructional design. 